Hello and happy Father's Day. This is Dew News and I'm your host, the King of Dew. And an extra special Father's Day hello to my own father. Uh, hope you are stacking all the ether today. Um, big Ethereum fan. Okay, so uh, we're going to get right to it here. I'm just going to do a really quick market update for you guys. And then I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Bitcoin soft fork, hard fork dilemma going on right now. Um, things are a little bit down today. It's a, kind of a quiet day. Uh, despite all that, Dash has broken $200, um, looking to go higher and higher. A pretty impressive run here by Dash, and uh, they are uh, looking like they might even pass NIM soon. So uh, they've been doing some good uh, marketing and campaigning as of late, um, and uh, it's getting a lot of people to hold, um, and I think that that's what's pushing the pressure up. So, uh, pretty good for Dash. Otherwise, everything else is kind of down right now. Uh, we're still waiting for this IOTA to get out of the way. It's still kind of bugged out. Should not be at that price from what I understand um, and what everyone's telling me. That this is some kind of bug or some type of exchange reporting the wrong amount. That being said, it also should be noted that uh, IOTA... Um, I saw a little investigation piece done on this today. Looks like it's actually quite centralized. It is not as decentralized as they uh, claim. It's very centralized, actually, right now. They have a, a special uh, centralized uh, safety valve in place in case it were to get hacked. Um, and uh, it's very interesting. So, a uh, little interesting. Uh, I like the idea of the technology, but um, as far as anyone who's believing it's decentralized, take note um, that it is actually not at this time. And uh, it sounds like they are potentially not going to uh, have that centralization in the long run, but as of right now, it is definitely centralized. So just to let, that's free for you guys. I, uh, that just came to my mind there. Besides that, uh, Gollum is uh, up significantly, which is surprising. Um, it's actually broken off in a way from, uh, Ethereum and, uh, just, uh, getting a little out of control there on the price waves right there. So I'm not going to go too much farther. A lot of you steam it people out there like to know what steam's at $2 right now, essentially. Um, so no, no huge movement today, um, up and down other besides dash. And so that's your market update. And with that being said, we're going to talk about some Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin right now at 2560, and, uh, which is very interesting. So if you guys see, you may not be able to see the, the time on my screen, but essentially the markets in China have been open for roughly 40 minutes. And I was eyeing it very closely because of the news that is coming out. So we're going to go over here to Polonex and watch um, in real time while we talk about it. Let me bring up some Bitcoin versus USD, um, just to simplify it for you guys. So, maybe a little bit of a downtrend here is uh, occurring, but nothing significant, no big drop-offs. And essentially what happened is um, that the miners have uh, basically come to an agreement. Uh, they had a nice little meeting uh, this week, and uh, about 80% of, uh, of them are basically supporting... Um, activation of SegWit 2x and uh, so they have about 80% support for this um, and testing uh, is starting immediately so um, it's basically Monday on the other side of the world right now and uh, they have started immediately with trying to launch this now uh, why is this important why does this matter to you uh, what the heck king of do you usually talk about ethereum stop talking about Bitcoin well um, Bitcoin is extremely important, guys. It is, it is proof of concept for all these blockchains. It is everything that uh, has created this space started with Bitcoin, and we have to respect it. Now, with that, we need that uh, respect to continue of this blockchain for many purposes. Um, essentially, what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, launch uh, before that hard fork threat on August 1st. So. Um, if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, basically you heard me talk about it just a little bit, and I'm sure you're reading it everywhere. Um, if you're interested in the crypto space at all or blockchain technology, you know about this, but essentially um, 
there is a threat to essentially uh, fork. Not much support for it, and there's definitely some downsides to it according uh, to the group that is trying to go with SegWit. Again, SegWit has 80% 80, 80 support. Um, I don't know what the percentage is of support for the hard fork. Um, I don't know if it's 1% uh, or the whole 20 other percent. But um, essentially, uh, this is what the uh, group supporting on the 80% side, the people who are supporting SegWit. Uh, I personally support SegWit, and that's just me. And that doesn't mean you have to either. Um, I, you know, I'm open to, my mind is very open to switching sides on this. Um, I, I'm not very strong with that opinion, but just based on what I've seen and what I've read. And um, I also believe in a consensus. And if the majority of people say that we need to use SegWit and stick with it, then that's what I think too. Because I like the decentralization of it. But that being said, um, here's some weaknesses of a hard fork according to that group, okay? Uh, leadership of that group um, ha basically are saying that uh, it, it's going to have a small hash power, slow blockchain generation, and uh, transactions will get stuck and clogged up um, on a hard fork. Um, there is no preventing from replay attacks, and uh, users are basically inevitably going to lose bitcoins, most likely, because of that. Um, there are potential threats to the main chain when you do this, um, and uh, essentially in order to even do a hard fork, all the exchanges that exist out there, right, that have Bitcoin, are going to have to stop. They're going to have to shut down. So even Polonex here, we're looking at Polonex, could you imagine every single exchange stopping, not being able to trade Bitcoin? What would that do to the markets in general, right? because everything's basically pegged to a Bitcoin. All your altcoins not being tradable. Think about it, guys. Uh, you may be able to trade uh, some funky ways. You, uh, some, a lot of people are able to trade Ethereum uh, for some EC20s and things like that. So that would continue. Um, so it's pretty detrimental. I mean, honestly, if it were, gonna, were to happen, it, it, it could actually bode extremely well for something like Ethereum during that time. But I think that overall... Uh, it's pretty dangerous. It could get a bad rap in the press, things like that. All this um, money getting tied up, locked down, and people getting really frustrated. Um, and besides all that, uh, the people that are interested in in forking, um, it's a very you know it's the minority. So uh, it's it's less than one in five that think it needs to go this route, needs to go this way, and. Um, so they, you know, they would immediately be a minority in this new world of hard fork and like not really have support. Um, the eighty percent are going to want to do something else, and so uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, the eighty percent have come out and said, "All right, it is time to take action and respond to this threat," um, and take action. Uh, two years ago, they were talking about taking action on scaling the block, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, and um, they just haven't done it yet. And it's taken a very serious threat to the blockchain in order to get them to wake up. It's kind of like maybe they're finally just giving in and like, well, I guess this is as good as it's going to get. I know that not everyone's a huge fan of this decision of even going with SegWit, but um, if we can maintain... Bitcoin the way that it is, I think it's good for everyone. Um, I would like to believe maybe in the future there's better technology um, that helps. Um, but basically, if you're not familiar the the concept, if I'm understanding it correctly, and help me in the comments if I'm wrong. But essentially, uh, this is going to be kind of like a side chain that exists that's going to help summarize transactions that are much faster, um, and so we can actually you know send Bitcoin quickly. Uh, and hopefully affordably, guys, the amount it costs to send a Bitcoin is ridiculous. Um, I actually like don't even like Bitcoin strictly because of how long it takes and the cost. Those are two huge things that need to go away immediately for it to remain competitive in a world of coins that have little to literally zero. We have some out there trying to create zero cost transactions, guys. So if Bitcoin wants to remain relevant, um, 
they're going to have to wake up in a hurry, hurry and help people out. And they got to balance this properly, too, because don't forget that the, the fees are paid out to the miners, the people who are verifying transactions, right? And so we have to keep the miners happy, too. They're very important to the network. Uh, the network would basically shut down if they all shut down at the same time, right? Pretty crazy to think about that they could do that. But it would take quite a wide-scale organization to do that. And they'd have to have 100% consensus to pull it off. But um, anyhow, but it's a very fine balance, guys. And uh, keep that in mind with Bitcoin. Um, so that's really about it. Um, you know, the other things I wanted to remind you guys is like, just the just the concept of a hard fork on Bitcoin in, in relation to businesses. Now, I don't know where you live. Where I live, I couldn't spend a Bitcoin if I tried. Okay, I'd have to do it online. I can't go to the store. Uh, I don't have any convenience stores accepting it. However, in China, you can walk into many stores and it's accepted. It's common. It's well known. Um, of course, right now, if you wanted to do a transaction, you might have to sit in the store for an hour and wait for it to actually clear. It's a pain. So, um, but all that being said, a hard fork, guys, a hard fork is not would not, would not bode well at all for the business side of things. And you guys know that if you watch this channel, that's what I care about. Um, it's what I look at first and foremost. Um, now, and I know that leans me a little more to like centralized a little bit kind of mentality and um, but at the end of the day for for world adoption of blockchain technology there are going to be centralized blockchains as well there's going to be de decentralized blockchains and I'm a huge fan of both both can serve uh, differently in different capacities and have um, uh, can specialize for the specific industries or solutions and I'm all for both um, but I happen to just look at the business side of things first, uh, just because, um, I don't know, I'm just into business things. It's just who I am, I guess. But, uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, a, a hard fork, for example, so like Peach Airline on May 22nd announced that they're going to accept Bitcoin on their flights. And I, I talked about it on the news a little bit and that's kind of cool, but you have to understand that a hard fork would basically completely make that announcement irrelevant they're gonna have to like go back and try to figure out if they even want to do this right um i mean we're talking about long-term infrastructure every time you're forking and things like that how does that affect the the payment systems point of sale systems um applications anything and everything that's using bitcoin um would have to change potentially and it scares people it scares the common person um, it scares me, and I know I know a little bit about what I'm talking about, but nothing like the people who have been doing this since the beginning, right? Um, so when I hear when I hear people who have been doing this since you know Bitcoin was in the pennies, uh, I respect what they have to say um, for sure. They they understand the history of Bitcoin better than I do, the community, things like that. And um, when when they're saying you know a hard fork is bad for business. Uh, I don't like that. I don't want a hard fork thing because I want it to be good for business. I want Bitcoin to succeed as much as I want Ethereum to succeed. I want everything to succeed because that's what it's going to take for this to reach um, our next goal of a trillion uh, dollar market cap. And um, so that's my take on this whole craziness going on with Bitcoin. I don't really have too much to say besides that. And I really want to have a conversation with you guys about it so leave uh, leave a comment down below on uh whether you support segwit or not and if you're not sure i would strongly encourage you this is probably one of the most important things right now that you need to go try to educate yourself on i spent a couple hours reading about it today reading the updates reading the announcements about the chinese miners um trying to release before the hard fork they're trying to it's like a race now guys there's like a panic um over there so it's kind of crazy, but it's also kind of exciting. But you've got to really dive in and start trying to understand it. And it's tough because there's so many articles out there on it with so many different viewpoints. And, it's, and you got to piece the history of everything going on together. But I still encourage you to go do it because this is a, it's a pivotal moment in our space. Uh, if it's screwed up, we are going to see money leave the market in a really big hurry. If, it's, if there's success, 
we could see a very high level of confidence in her, right? Um, you know, you guys look back at Ethereum when it hard forked. Price went way low. And, um, you know, ETC just showed up one day on Polinex. Just showed up. And now there's, you know, now they have their own community and everything. And um, people believe that ETC is the true decentralized version of Ethereum while Ethereum is decentralized. And um, I actually respect that opinion very much. I actually do. I do understand that Vitalik and his team is very willing to work with governments and things like that. Um, and I'm actually okay if they're centralized. Look at look at the support they have from, from businesses. Uh, the price would not be what it is today without uh, all of these organizations coming to be a part of the Ethereum Alliance, um, the, the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. Um, none of that would have happened, um, actually, if they, if they didn't prove to uh, essentially do some type of centralized decision making and actually hard fork. So, anyhow, it's kind of crazy. Um, I think that's about it. I think I don't have any too much more to say other than um, go research again. Go research, guys. Learn about this. Leave something that you found in the comments below. Share share articles with me and the other people that will be researching it. Um, and uh, let's look for opportunity. Let's look for threats, uh, strengths and weaknesses of, of both. And uh, let's properly evaluate this because it's a race for us now, right? Um, you know, that's why I was watching the markets so closely. And I still am right now. Zooming in here, it looks like the markets are actually maybe, you know, just stagnant on this news, which is surprising. This is really surprising. So, um... I figured we'd see up or we'd see down and it seems like it, we're just even killed as if nothing is going on um, but if we can do our research you know we're, we're gonna get ahead of this and we can protect ourselves if we need to um, but maybe there's an opportunity lying there as well so who knows what's gonna happen I think that the next 30 days is going to be full of drama and uh, some exciting news on the Bitcoin front um, and uh, that all being said, there's still crazy news that we should be looking for coming out of Ethereum soon. Um, more announcements about the Alliance and things like that. So there's some exciting times ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pop up and take a look and see if there's anything else that's exciting coming up in the short term. I'm just bringing up a calendar here. And... Uh, don't forget that the status.im ICO is scheduled for Tuesday. Um, I've talked about that on uh, one of my most recent videos. Definitely check that out. I think that's uh, fascinating. I'm really looking forward to being able to share. Um, yeah, I'm looking. I'm, I'm, you're going to be able to share a DAP on your mobile phone, so I'm really excited about that. And. Um, Looks like uh, Numari tokens will be released on the Ethereum chain. Uh, that's exciting. I've talked about Numari on this channel too. Super exciting. Um, and so that looks like what's coming up here. And then it looks like we got Civic on the 21st. Not sure uh, what specific news that is or if that's the ICO. I'll have to check on that one. But um, we do have the Blockchain Expo coming up um, at the top of the month. And uh, so be looking out for some news to pop from that. And uh, then we have the crypto finance uh, out of London. And that one's going to be very interesting as the London has been having lots of talks about cryptocurrency as of late. So um, anyhow, guys, that's it for me on this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, uh, subscribe if you like this news. Thumbs up, of course. Share it with a friend. Um, and uh, go ahead and hop on over to Steam it and shoot me an upvote. It means the world to me. That's the best thing you could do, guys, um, to be honest, because um, I get more out of your one upvote than I ever will from any of this, you know, any type of ad you might see or um, any donation. Steema is fantastic, and I really appreciate the upvotes over there, guys. It's really uh, helping me, and uh, hopefully someday I can cover my investment on all this mess right here because <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on right here. Um, and, uh, I do it cause it's fun, but hopefully, uh, you know, I can 
pay, pay it off before uh, my wife finds out how much I really spent. So, all right, guys. Appreciate it very much. And as always, I'm the King of Dew. May the Force be with you. Happy Father's Day.